So today I'm going to share my work on predictive analysis of Bloomberg Automated Insights, or BAIs. So these BAIs are essentially some fully automated data-driven news stories. We are covering more than 200 of these news, ranging from hedge fund position to uh, anomalies in individual equities and indices. So I'm going to explain more about them soon. So in the past few years, we have seen a lot of cases where the corporate actions, like say mergers, acquisitions, has been preceded by the publication of these automated news. So the question is, are these really predictive or we are just lucky? Here are a few examples that one of my colleagues sent to me almost on a daily basis. He's managing the production of this news and almost every day, I have one of these news in my in uh, inbox. So it says, look at the success story, how we could predict, uh, for example, here in, for the case of wordplay, it was earlier this March. So we saw that before the uh, acquisition of wordplay by GA, which company was that? By Nash, uh, Fidelity National. So we see some activities in the market. Our automated system has start picking up some signals. We saw some people start searching about this company without anything going on in the market, no major news. People start searching a lot about it. Then we saw the options uh, trading search. And after that, uh, it was a Friday. On Monday, they, uh, they announced the acquisition. So the stock price jumped 10% and those options, like the price got almost tripled and all other this kind of stories. The first impression I have about this kind of story is that most probably we are cherry picking. So because it's human psychology, we, we just remember the good ones. We see such thing happen, we go dig in and see if we had published something before. And we find this say, look, so our news are predictive. But reality might be different. Maybe a lot of cases we do publish this news and nothing happens and we never notice that. So let me show you one example here. Um, so here is the uh, a sequence of events for the company CRM workforce. So I have highlighted the earning, it's from July 2018 to July this year. I highlighted the earnings, you, you can see these blue circles. Then we have some price jumps or drops, which I call them peaks move. It is a small green. And we have the corporate actions that we are interested in are as a green stars, which they are not quite clear here. And then we have all those news stories in a small orange star form. Let me remove the price so it makes it more clear what's going on. So you see, before these corporate actions, we did publish some news. For some of them, actually not that close, but we do have publication of some news. But look at the whole story. Seemingly, we're just publishing them all the time. So are they really predictive? Maybe they are, maybe not. There is some signal, or we need to extract it. So that's the story that I'm going to explain, how we can extract those signals, when these are predictive, under what condition, and what they are good for. So before going that, I need to explain what news stories I'm looking at. So I picked 12 main categories that for this study. So we look at social velocity. is when people start talking about companies in social media, like Twitter start discussing. So we give it an, a score. We look at if it's more than certain threshold, we publish this news. We have CDS mover. We look at credit default swaps. We look at the analyst change when they change their recommendation. We have several option signals like intraday trade volumes on options. We look if it's more than some certain threshold. We publish this news, implied volatility, volatility. And one of the most interesting one is this one, news hit. It's essentially similar to Google um, Trends. So the way it works is that we look at the people, when us, there's no news about anything about the company, no corporate announcement, nothing almost, quiet. But we see a lot of people that start searching about the company. So it kind of sounds suspicious. We may say, oh, maybe they have some 
info about the company that is not public yet. So that's the new seed. And we look at the block trade trades and insider trades, short position by companies and short interest. So the diagram you see here is, might be a little confusing at first. It's essentially a multidimensional, let's call it Venn diagram. So since we have a lot of categories, it's almost impossible to show it in a Venn diagram. So the way you can read it is that we have all these categories on the left, their frequency. For example, analyst chain in this period that I looked for the around 600, around 8,000 companies are here. So 6,000 of these companies have analyst change. For new seed, the coverage is around only 3,000 of them. Not all the company have all kind of news. So the universe is different. Some of these, these news uh, only cover the North America and Europe. Some of them are global. Depends to the type of definition they have and the threshold. So not all the companies can have all kind of news. So the most frequent uh, scenario is this one. Companies have analyst chain and short position uh, news and nothing else. So around 600 of them are there. And the next scenario is only an exchange. So there are around 500 companies just have an exchange news and nothing else. And you see that as we go to more complex cases, then we have more kind of news. They are very rare, actually. They become rare. So that's the universe we are going to look at. And for the corporate actions, uh, which we are interested are essentially acquisitions and divestiture. Divestiture is when a company sells a unit or the whole company. So we are interested in acquisition and divestiture mainly. We look at debts and dividend pays because I want to study how they affect the uh, generation of this news. But they are not something I want to predict. We look at the uh, spin-offs and splits. We look at joint venture. We are interested to predict this if we can. So again, you see how these companies uh, how, what kind of corporate actions they have. Like the most common thing is most of these companies have only dividend and they never do anything. We do publish news about them, but they never have acquisition, divestiture, or joint venture. So essentially, whatever we publish, go nowhere for this. But we do have a good chunk of them do have acquisition and divestiture. So these are the cases that we are interested to predict. And the other major thing that I want to predict is the price moments. First, we need to define what is a major price moment. So the way, the way I define it is essentially, I look at max drawdown or drop, which is the opposite of it, and normalize it by the volatility. If it's more than two and a half standard deviation away, I call it, this is a major price. Here you can see it, uh, the periods with major price movement for a uh, random stocks with just big. So, this price movement, 50% of the time, happens to be only one day. So it's within one day, price jump, and you can't do anything after that. It's stable. But around 50% of the time is actually within several days. It can be even up to five or even more days. These are business days, by the way. So five stands for one week. So it can be for a long period of time that stock is on the rise or going down. So or for example here. So when did it start, the price? Here we mark it as a price movement start, and when it ends, we call it price move end. Later, you're gonna see this notation in my thing. We are interested in those news that can predict the start of this. Of course, we can have some news within this band, between a start and end. You may, if you do trade on uh, momentum, you may like it, but essentially, I'm not that interested in those. I prefer to see which one can predict the start of moments. And okay, here a, a global picture of what we're going to see in this news. Again, the same kind of diagram. The most common scenario that happens as we publish one news, okay, maybe I should explain what I mean by inside A and B. So A stands for after, B stands for before. So this is as of we publish one news. So the most common scenario is this. As we publish one news, uh, we have something before it, other news. We have something after it. It just means this news come in clusters. They are not normally alone. 
if we publish, we normally publish different kind of news on a company. So that's the kind of clustering behavior that news they have. The events that we are interested in are these green ones, which are price movements, and the orange ones, which are corporate action. They are less common, but there are a lot of them. Hopefully, if we can predict a few right, we can retire. So now let's go to the methodology. So one way to uh, model this is just use a machine learning model. We fit it to some linear model or some nonlinear model, get the output, if then look at the most important variables, and based on that, we decide. Unfortunately, linear models don't work for this, and it was not successful. If we use nonlinear, we're going to have a better prediction. But the issue is that they are kind of black box. Like, say, I fit a random forest to it, and I get the most important uh, parameters from random forest. I still, it does, I cannot explain why it picks some certain variable. Why is it important? Maybe, even though I do my best to not overfeed and take care of all those uh, details, but still, I cannot explain anything. So I came up with a model that actually can solve the issues we have with the modeling. So essentially, model-free, we can predict the, uh, all, uh, the predictive power of all these models. Also, we can uh, uh, study the clustering behavior or co-occurrence of these news together, which is also important for us because at the end of the day, we want to decrease the noise and increase the signal. So if two things carry the same thing, we don't want to spam people. We want to just publish less and more efficient one. And also the generation mechanism that I'm going to discuss after. So the idea behind the model is quite simple. So the idea is this. If, if um, if this news happened to be, if we, we look at the observed rate of these events, like say the rate of occurrence of new seed before the visitors, we look at this observed rate. If this rate happened to be more than one would expect to see it from random just by chance, then it means that there is something there. We are not assuming anything about that kind of relation. Is it linear, nonlinear? We don't know. But we can tell if it happens more often than what we would expect to see it just by chance, pure chance, then there is something there and there is some relation. That's up to machine learning or us to find it. So to make it more clear, let's show you one simple example. So for this company, uh, we observed that all the publications for this company over a period of time. So let's say in day two, we publish a news hit. We see people start searching about this company, and nothing is going on on the internet about it. So, but some people start searching about it. Then the next day, we see people start talking about it in Twitter. Nothing happens. Two days quiet. Then we, at day six, we see the, start, uh, the price start to rise. And the day after, we hear the announcement. Then the price most probably jump a lot at that point. So quiet for a while. Then we see this company suddenly announced they have acquisition. We didn't pick up anything before it. We missed it. And the day after, because of this, we're going to see the volume a spike, the trading volume spikes. We see the option trades a spike, and then quiet period, and so on. So what we can do is that for all these 8,000 companies that I'm looking at, for each of them, we can generate a table like this. Essentially, columns are all possible kind of news and corporate actions, price movements that might happen. And each row is the observed uh, realization of this news. So like, say, for news it, and what we do, we count all the events that happen within the five business days. Uh, I forgot to mention, we are looking at the short-term prediction only one week ahead. So we are not interested in long-term prediction. We want to see if these news are only predictive in this case and nothing else. So, so we count all those news. For example, for the researcher at day seven, we do see that there is a news hit before. We do see there is a price movement and social velocity. So those columns are going to get one, and the other columns going to be empty, zero event. So 
We have it for all 8,000. We create this giant table. We can calculate the obs observed event rate for, let's say, new seed before the visitor or social well, well, velocity before the visitor and so on for all of them. It can be something like this, right? Then, then we randomize everything. Then we assume, okay, this news, this news that we publish, assuming they, they don't cause the the fact that we publish news, it doesn't cause that the company is in the process of being acquired by some other company. They have nothing to do with it. So let's say we publish them. What if we have published them just randomly? So we do that. We want to break the structure by doing this. So we randomize all these news. We keep the corporate actions as they were, or price movement. We don't touch them. You see, they are going to be the same. But we're going to randomize all the news. And now we calculate these rates again for thousands of time, maybe bootstrap it for uh, thousands of time. So what we're going to get at the end, we're going to get a histogram, a distribution of all these observed rates if the things were random. Now we can compare. This is what we observe. This is what we had expect if the things were random. If, if the observed rate is different from random substantially, then means there was something there. We didn't did it just by chance. If it is within this range, close to the expected value, within this distribution, then most probably it's just uh, luck that we saw those kind of combinations are predictive. We can also condense this and just have a z-score. We have observed rate, expected rate, the standard deviation, and report it as a z-score. So now I'm going to show you the result for a few cases. So this, oh, something about the thing. I also group these companies based on the market cap because whatever governs for large cap is normally different from a small cap. They have different governing rules and procedures. So I found it is uh, important to break it. Otherwise, we may lose the signal. We aggregate too much. So for this case, what you see where the columns are the, those corporate actions and price movements. And on the rows, you can see all those 12 news types that we were interested in. So you see, for example, for volume spike for acquisition or the visitor, what we observe is within the random range. So most probably, this, the fact that we publish a volume spike is of no importance. If you see it, it doesn't mean anything before a acquisition or the visitor. They just be published by chance. But we see social velocity actually has some signal to it. They, we see them more often than one would expect. So this shows us social velocity has a pow predictive power for the visitor and acquisition. That's the beauty of it. Uh, it tells us instantly what this uh, news is useful for. For example, it's not useful for joint venture, split, or listing, and other ones. It's just useful for acquisition and the visitor. So kind of we can use it for feature selection. And the relation we should find out if it's linear or nonlinear. But anyway, we know that these are very nonlinear. For the price movement, we see that the only good predictor we have is news hit, as we expected. By definition, it's because it's something suspicious. People start searching when there's nothing. Most probably there's something. And we see that in average, yes, they, it does have signal. You can see it for the mid caps and small caps. I also summarize it here in a z-score form, so you can see all different caps uh, in this uh, bar charts. So as you see here for new seed, where is it? New seed is the only one which cons is consistent and good in predictive price movement a start before we. So this is a good signal. We can use it. Some of them are like insider or this one, short positions, actually they tend to miss. The z-score is extremely negative. So it just means that these guys normally do their trade, these insiders, after the movements are over. So they wait for the movements are over, then they decide they want to buy or sell. They don't do it during the price movements. That's why they are extremely negative. Or some like analyst change. They tend to always, almost always miss the price movement, a start of it. But they are a very good predictor of price movement. And 
it means that simply they publish the, this analyst, change their decision while the stock price is on the move. They are not predictive. They can't tell when the move price. But after it price, they decide, oh, OK, maybe we should update our recommendation. So that's why they are good at predicting end of it, but not the start of it. It means they do the decision in between when the price already starts to move. So that was for the best predictor. So another side product of this analysis is the co-occurrence analysis, which now we can look how this news uh, get published together, which is quite interesting and useful for us. Like you see, the, on the diagonal, we have all the news and versus news within five days. All of these news suffer from the except news hit, which I'm going to tell why, going to suffer from the high rate of co-occurrence. means within one week, we keep publishing them because people start talking about them, like say social velocity, then we publish, then we see more and publish. One way to decrease this uh, publication and improve the signal is just to simply publish less, because we see that. Or also we can see that how they come together. Almost all news have some kind of clustering effect. They come together a lot. The only one that has actually negative uh, thing is the news seed. Is is because the news hit by definition is that when we have no news about something, if we already have another news hit, we are not supposed to publish another news hit because we already have the news hit. So that's why they do not come together. So co-occurrence, and you can see them here in the Z-score format. You can see how severe it is for some of them. So it's going to be faster. Then. Another topic that we are interested to look at is the, uh, how these corporate actions, price movements or announcement of corporate actions, actually causing the trigger of triggering the, this um, news. Here, if you look, you see the price movement actually moving a lot of this kind of news, especially option signals, volumes, options in uh, volumes, options in I mean volumes and the volume in the trading, these guys tend to come more often after the price movement. So people see that the price move, then they start doing the more trade. Or within the, of course, pr uh, price movement, people do more trade. So we see more of them. That's one way to filter them and decrease them. Or we see the trace spikes when the company issued debt, of, of course, because the, they issued debt. So, or for analyst change, the one which I explained, you see, they tend to come after price movement. It means that they are, these guys are just reactive. They are not predictive. They just see the price drop and update their recommendation. Of course, this is on average. I'm not talking about all of them. So, so far we saw the single uh, predictors. Now we can look the same analysis on the combination of them. Actually, the things are getting more interesting when we look at the combinations. So, for example, let's look at volume spike. We see that it's, the quality is not that great, so it's good, actually. Cannot record it. So we can see that, like for here, for social velocity and block trace, when we have these signals before volume spike, the chance of something happen, like the accuracy of our prediction, jump around 30%. The base rate is around only 5% for corporate action. So imagine you have almost 30% chance when you see this combination that something is going to happen within one week. So I'm going to skip this. We have the same for price movement. And the last part which I wanted to talk is essentially about the content generation for this news. So these news are kind of template. If some certain criteria is met, we publish them and we just fill up some gaps in the template. So after what we learn about the connection of these news together, how they work together, so we, we were working on this to make them more smart and make the content dynamics using these uh, Bayesian networks. Well, we can explain. I, I guess I'm done. Thank you for your attention.